Do you prefer your Christmas movies blood-soaked rather than filled with the same tired holiday cheer? We've got the perfect deep cut for you. Listening to the lyrics of Santa Claus is Coming to Town, it's easy to read a menacing tone from its warnings. St. Nick sees you when you're sleeping. He even knows your sins, so you better watch out. Or else. The idea of a less jolly Santa is a wellspring of humor and broken spines in 2022's Violent Night, which sees David Harbour's Santa Claus doling out season's beatings in defense of a child on his coveted good list. And what do you do to the naughty ones? I give them a lump of coal. The movie is plenty of fun, but what if you want more dark, offbeat meditations on Christmas? A casual stroll through the most recommended tinsel-draped horror movies will bring you by the 1984 slasher Silent Night, Deadly Night, which Slash Films' Scott Thomas points out isn't the first killer Santa story, but it's the one people tend to think of first. Scratch a little deeper to discover 2010's Finnish treasure Rare Exports, a Christmas tale, whose elves are as menacing as old Saint Nick. But those who can look past a layer of low-budget grime are sure to dig the movie that John Waters once called the greatest Christmas movie ever made. Enter the snowbound psychological extravaganza, Christmas Evil. The demented Christmas nightmare sits atop the heap of holiday-centered horror that would pepper the 1980s. In the horror cinema chronicle, Shock Value, how a few eccentric outsiders gave us nightmares, conquered Hollywood, and invented modern horror, New York Times critic Jason Zinneman credits Bob Clark's 1974 sorority slash fest Black Christmas as the movie to prime the pump for bloodbaths with a holiday in the title, with John Carpenter's Halloween popularizing the concept even further a few years later. As far as Yuletide horror goes, what began with the psychodrama of Christmas Evil and David Hess's sorority horror to All a Good Night in 1980 would continue with director Edmund Purdom exchanging a killer Santa for a Santa killer in his 1984 exploitation classic Don't Open Till Christmas. The mischievous mogwai of Gremlins would get mainstream glory by the mid-80s, and the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise would carry the candy-striped baton into the following decade. Garbage day! Huh? No! Ah! Among the entire subgenre, Jackson's take on Christmas twinkles the brightest, despite the frown it wears. It sees Brandon McGart in the starring role as the meek and disgruntled Harry Stadling, an employee of the Jolly Dream Toy Company. In a moody contrast to Harbour's non-interventionist Santa, who has to be convinced to help a young hostage in Violent Night, Stadling harbors a Santa Claus obsession that festers into a willful intervention in people's lives on a mission to adopt the role of holiday enforcer. He keeps a list and checks it twice, and naughty Grinches get something nastier than a lump of coal. Christmas naturally embraces the dark and gloomy. Kids get to unwrap their gifts bright and early on the big morning, but the real show happens in the witching hours of night, when Santa delivers his judgment in the form of reward or punishment. The old world knows the winter season as one beset by consequence doling devils and witches. Harry Stadling takes on their dimensions, a countercultural Krampus who drapes his Santa suit over his belly and sets out to carry out his own twisted iteration of Christmas. The opening features the type of traumatic flashback seen in the classic Deep Red, this time with a child observing a spicier version of I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. It's naughty enough to seriously disturb young Harry Stadling. As the adult Harry dons a beard and pads himself to complete the Santa look, it takes on the air of drag performance. Multiple Maniacs filmmaker John Waters says in the DVD commentary, it's an art movie in a weird way, but it's also almost like someone wants to get a sex change to pass as Santa, to become Santa. Instead of wanting to be a woman, he wants to be Santa Claus and fetishizing all things related to Saint Nick. The body count in Christmas Evil isn't as sky-high as the massacre in Violent Night, but it offers enough perversity and subversion of the old values to put a twinkle in the eyes of those who find humor in a back-breaking chimney. 